Welcome back to PC Builder News, I'm Jason. Today, AMD announced the RX 7600 XT GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, Ryzen 8000 series APUs, and four new AM4 Ryzen 5000 CPUs, including the 5700X 3D. Now, AMD shared this information with us before the launch, so let's quickly run through the details and my thoughts on whether you should wait for these products. Like the video if you get value out of it, and subscribe for more great PC building content. With that, Let's jump into it. Let's start off with the AMD Radeon RX 7600 XT GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which AMD is announcing in the face of NVIDIA's RTX 4000 Super Series. Looking at the specs, basically AMD has taken an RX 7600 GPU and overclocked it about 10% at the base clock and 4% for the boost clock, as well as added that extra eight gigabytes of VRAM for 16 gigabytes total. With a new overclock, the RX 7600 XT has a total board power of 190 watts, up from 165 watts on the non-XT, but still very reasonable. The 7600 XT will also come with DisplayPort 2.1 ports, rather than a mix of DisplayPort 1.4 and 2.1 ports, as the 7600 non-XT does. Of course, the entire RX 7000 series also includes AV1 encoding, as does NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series. In terms of performance, first, I wanna emphasize that AMD gave us this data, so it should be heavily scrutinized, and we should wait for third-party testing to draw any firm conclusions. Looking at AMD's first-party data, they're claiming a 10 to 15% uplift over the RX 7600 non-XT. Now, all these results include FSR2, though Forza Horizon 5 results show a 44% uplift, and they're a little hard to believe. AMD also provided a comparison chart at 1440p versus NVIDIA's RTX 4068 gigabyte. And in addition to rasterized performance, added bars for upscaling either through FSR or DLSS, as well as frame generation using their respective technologies. You can pause the video if you want to take a closer look at them, but I'm just going to focus on the bars for AMD's claimed rasterized performance and go ahead and ignore the upscaling and frame generation, which shows the RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte performance that roughly beats the RTX 4060, but it isn't worlds better. A better metric might just be looking at the previous RTX 4068 gigabyte review data from TechSpot, which showed the RX 7600 non-XT, that's the eight gigabyte model, at 62 average FPS across a wide range of games at 1440p high to ultra settings, which roughly tied the RTX 4060, but with the RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte GPU nearly 20% faster. And that's a GPU that you can still pick up right now for around $320 US, at least in the United States, though stock does seem to be thinning out. If we inserted the RX 7600 XT 16GB at about 10% faster than the vanilla 7600, that would give us an average FPS of 68, still about 10% behind the 6700 XT. Of course, we'll have to wait and see actual testing data. The RX 7600 XT 16GB GPU goes on sale January 24th for a $329 MSRP. I specifically asked AMD why a gamer would want to pick up the RX 7600 XT 16GB GPU for $329 over the faster 6700 XT 12GB GPU for around $320 right now. And they sent me the following quote. We built the RX 7600 XT to be Radeon's entry point for last generation RDNA 3 graphics with 16 gigs of frame buffer. And we are launching at a $120 lower price than the NVIDIA RTX 4000 series with 16 gigabytes. The RDNA 3 family builds on RDNA 2 and adds future-proof technologies, including DisplayPort 2.1, improved video capabilities, and increased AI performance. Beyond a great gaming experience, the RX 7600 XT with 16 gigabytes of memory also means more capacity and more capability for your creativity and AI applications. So what do I think of the RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte? Well, listen, in a world where the RTX 3060 12 gig and the RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte GPUs just don't exist new at retail, and honestly, it's possible that both those GPUs are gonna sell through completely in the next couple months, then the 7600 XT 16 gigabyte is clearly superior to the RTX 4060 eight gigabyte card, and it's well worth the $30 price premium. It'd probably be worth quite a bit more given the VRAM difference, and at the same time, it's gonna be a little bit faster as well. But as long as we live in a world where you can buy an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte GPU for 40 or 50 bucks cheaper, and the significantly faster RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte GPU exists for almost the same price, if not a little bit cheaper, not to mention Intel's A770 16 gigabyte GPU at 299, though of course their weaker drive 
driver support does kind of put it in a different category, then my recommendation for those stretching every last dollar would probably still be the RTX 3060 12 gig. And for those with $329 to spend, I'd easily recommend the 6700 XT or the 6750 XT 12 gigabyte instead. I think at the price for 299 or, or better yet 269 as the original 7600 eight gigabyte GPU launched at, the 7600 would have a clearer place in the market and would certainly be preferable to the RTX 3060 or the 4060. Of course, AMD did relent with the price of the RX 7600 eight gigabyte, changing the price at the very last minute from 299 to 269. And you've been able to pick that up for almost about $230 recently. So maybe AMD will make the same choice before it goes on sale January 24th. AMD also announced new CPUs today, including four new Ryzen 5000 CPUs for the AM4 platform and a new lineup of Ryzen 8000G APUs for the AM5 socket, all of which are launching January 31st. The most interesting AM4 CPU is probably the Ryzen 5700X 3D, which has an identical spec to the Ryzen 5800X 3D, except that both the base and boost clock are 400 megahertz slower. Other than that, it has the same amount of overall cache at 100 megabytes, same core count, and same 105 watt TDP. The other CPUs are versions of the Ryzen 5000 series APUs, which use a different architecture than the Zen 3 based CPUs like the Ryzen 5600X, including quite a bit less L3 cache, which is very important for gaming. The Ryzen 5700 has identical specs to the Ryzen 5700G APU, but with out the integrated graphics and comes with the race spire cooler. That's really the first time we've seen this cooler since the Ryzen 3600X days. There are also two additional APUs in the Ryzen 5600 GT, which is just a slightly overclocked version of the Ryzen 5600 G, and the Ryzen 5500 GT, which seems like a four core, eight thread version of the Ryzen 5600 G. It's also interesting to note that AMD has ditched the Vega name for their integrated graphics cores, now calling them Radeon Graphics instead. Pricing on these CPUs is $249 for the Ryzen 5700 X3D, $175 for the Ryzen 5700, $140 for the Ryzen 5600 GT, and $125 for the Ryzen 5500 GT. Except for the Ryzen 5700 X3D, which does seem very interesting given how cheap DDR4 RAM is, as well as how cheap B550 motherboards are. The Ryzen 5000 series APU prices seem oddly out of touch with the CPU market, as graphics really aren't strong enough for gaming, even at 1080p low settings. And for budget gaming builds, you've been able to pick up a Ryzen 5500 for under $100 and a Ryzen 5600 for around $130, while the Ryzen 5700X has been $170, and all are likely gonna be better gaming options for systems with a dedicated graphics card. Moving to the Ryzen 8000 series APUs, these are basically desktop versions of the mobile chips that AMD announced in December. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time here, but I do want to be specific and say that these are not the Zen 5 based successors to the Ryzen 7000 CPUs, which we are expecting to launch in the first half of this year. Instead, like their Ryzen 5000 APU predecessors, these are essentially hybrids of current Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 series CPUs that trade less L3 cache in favor of integrated graphics. For comparison, the Ryzen 7600 has 38 megabytes combined cache, which has a huge gaming impact but the Ryzen 8600G only has 22 megabytes of combined cache and instead has more powerful integrated graphics and neural processing units for AI workloads. For the integrated graphics, AMD compared the Ryzen 8700G performance favorably to an i5 13400F with a GTX 1650 dedicated GPU. While this might be impressive for mobile applications like lightweight laptops, handheld gaming devices, and for OEM business class desktops, it doesn't really seem like something PC building enthusiasts will wanna focus on. I'd also add that only the Ryzen 8700G has more powerful Radeon 780M integrated graphics with more cut down versions on the Ryzen 8600G and 8500G. On the AI side, while AMD lists what it calls over 100 AI experiences that can take advantage of Ryzen AI, which are mostly Adobe Creative Suite, DaVinci, and Topaz creator tools, it didn't really offer any performance number, so it's hard to say what the current benefit actually is. AMD was able to get me pricing information just before the embargo lift, so the 8-core 8700G is going to MSRP for $329, the 6-core 8600G is gonna retail for $279, the 6-core 8500G was slightly downgraded integrated graphics is going to retail for $179, and the Ryzen 8300G is going to be just for the pre-built market only and is not going to ship to the DIY PC market at this time. So do I think any of these CPUs are interesting for PC builders? 
Well, first, I want to point out that when they launched the Ryzen 5500, it was a silly $159 price, which was terrible at the time, but it dropped to less than $100, making it a fantastic gaming CPU along with the i3-1200F. So unlike the stubborn GPU prices, I do expect these CPU prices to change to meet the market. So we'll have to wait and see on final pricing. The first CPU that seems immediately interesting is the 5700X 3D for $249, particularly if it provides most of the performance of the 5800X 3D at about $100 discount. Certainly it's gonna be a great drop in upgrade for AM4 owners if that's the case, which I do expect it will be but it could also edge out the Ryzen 7600 for mid-range gaming as that CPU has been going for 195, but is back up to almost $230 right now. And DDR4 RAM is so cheap compared to DDR5. Though with the 7600, you do get that future upgrade. So we'll just have to wait and see how that shakes out once we get to test it. The other CPU I think might be interesting is the Ryzen 8500G, which could offer a cheaper portal for US gamers into the AM5 platform Given that the Ryzen 7500F is just not sold in the US other than retailers that ship it directly from China, like AliExpress. If that CPU offers similar performance at the mid range, it might be a viable budget option for gamers as well. But again, we're just gonna have to wait and see for testing. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think of this announcement? What do you think of the 7600 XT? What do you think of the new CPUs? If you got value out of this video, please give it a like because it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon for more PC building content. And we'll catch you on the next one.